Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 101, the very first video in the second series of the videos from 101 through 200. And today we'll discuss the notion of rational number versus the irrational number. What makes a number a rational number? What makes a number an irrational number? And what we'll see in a few seconds time is that it is actually a very simple concept because there is only one rule, there is only one criterion, there is only one criterion that this determines, that determines whether a given quantity is a rational number or an irrational number. And that criterion is that a number is to be considered a rational number. A rational number, a rational number is one that can be that that can be that 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 can be written as a fraction. So if you have a quantity if you have a quantity and if you're able to express that quantity as a fraction, one number on divided by another number, then it's a rational number. If you cannot express that as a fraction and there are some quantities that cannot be expressed as fractions, those are called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers, irrational number is, is something that can, that cannot, that cannot be expressed as a fraction. Let's, look at, look, let's, look at, let's take a look at an example of both of them, but before we do that, since this word cropped up and it's on the blackboard, let's take care of this word criterion. Criterion is a word that we learned a long time ago in our vocabulary lessons. I'm looking at the list here. On the day number, just give me one second, I'll find it. Day, day number 66. Vocab D66. Criterion. R I O N is a singular of the word criteria. Don't use the word criteria if there's only one rule that you're using to determine something. The only criterion that is to be employed in distinguishing whether a given quantity is a prime, whether the given quantity is a rational number or an irrational number is the simple fact, is the simple questions, can I write that as a fraction? Can I write this quantity as a fraction? If the answer is yes, then it's a rational number. If the answer is no, it's an irrational number. There's only one rule, that's it. There's only one criterion. If you're interested in learning this word and some other words, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in whichever test that you're preparing for. It doesn't matter, ACD, SAT, TEAS, GMAT, or GRE. Just type in, G, for example, G, GRE, GRE vocabulary words, day 66, or SAT vocabulary words, day number 66, and you will see the word where we learned the word, where we, where, and you will see the video where we learned the word criterion, which, as we said just now, is a singular of criteria. Uh, many a times I have go around. I have, I have seen people going around saying the only criteria that we use. Well, if it's the only bloody one, it cannot be criteria. The only criterion that we used. Do you understand? Anyway, that was a bit of a digression. Back to our work here. Our, a number is a rational number that can be written as a fraction. For example, and if, if oh, okay, before we get into the before we get into the example, and if something can be written as a fraction. If something can be written as a fraction, then there are two possibilities. Then, in that case, there are two possibilities. Either, either, either it will have, it will have a, what is known as a term, term, it will either have a terminating decimal, a decimal that terminates, for example, we'll, we'll talk about example, let me fix it, or it will have a terminating decimal, or it will have, it will have a repeated pattern of decimals. And in both cases, either this, it will have a repeated pattern of decimals, or the decimal will terminate, it will stop, it will end. In either of those cases, it can be written as a fraction. That quantity that we're describing can be written as a fraction. For example, let's look at let's take a look at example first. For example, 0 0.125. 0 0.125, as you can clearly see, it ends. That's it. 0 0.125. 
Well, since it ends, because it affects, it has a terminating decimal, it, it, it ends, it terminates, that's it, that's the end of the story. One to five, end of the story, that's it, it's finished. Well, it can be written as a fraction. It can clearly be written as 125 over 1,000. And if you would reduce it, you will find that it boils down to 1 8. The fact that it boils down to 1 8 is actually not the important part here. That's, the mood, uh, the, the, that's not the important part here. The point here is, the fact that we can reduce this, that's not the point we're trying to make here. The point here is that it can be written as a fraction, 125 over 1,000. This, this decimal point, 125, can be written as a fraction, 125 over 1,000. And the reason why it can be written as a fraction is because the bloody thing ends. If it did not end, if it went on forever, we could not have written as a fraction. Because the top, uh, what were you going to write on the top? It's, it never ends. It goes on forever. Here's another example. How about, how about uh, 0.75? 0.75 is a silly example. It ends, I say 0.75, terminating decimal. It terminates, 0.75, end of the story. Well, that is saying as 75 over 100. And if you like, of course, we can write that as 3 quarter. But the point is, it, do, it can be 0.75. The point is 0.75, because of the fact that the decimal terminates, it can be written as a fraction. On the other hand, we have situations where decimal does not terminate. It can still be written as a fraction. That's the second scenario. It can still be written as a fraction, and therefore it is still a rational number, as long as, as long as, even though the decimal does not end, as long as it has a repeated pattern of decimals. For example, for example, 0 0.3333333 3, 3, 3, 3 goes on and on. Well, that can be written as a fraction. That is simply one over three. That is simply one. So here's another one. How about 0 0.4444444 4, 4, 4, 4, forever and ever? That can be written as a fraction. That will, if you do, if you do the work, you will find out that that is simply four over nine. Here's another one. Here's here's another one. How about point point five four five four five four five four five four four ever and ever? It never ends, even though it never ends. It is a rational number because even though it never ends, it it has a clear pattern. Point five four five four five four five four. It repeats. The pattern repeats indefinitely. And because of the fact that it, is, it does have a pattern, this quantity can be expressed as a fraction. And this is in fact equal to 0.545454 is in fact equal to 6 over 11. And of course you can verify all of these things by pulling out your calculator and just divide 6 by 11. You will see that it's just 0.54. And this qualifies as a rational number. Irrational numbers on the other hand cannot be written as a fraction. They cannot be written as a fraction. I'm going to have a demarcation here so that we, we can keep the two separate here. Well, here's the word. Here's another word. We just used it. We will have a demarcation so we can keep the two separate. Demarcation is just a very fancy way of saying a boundary, a border. I'm going to quickly give you the day where we learned the word demarcate. If I can find it, that is, in my, in my list of the vocabulary words. Just give me one. Day number 12. Just type in SAT vocabulary words, day 12, or GRE vocabulary words, or GMAT vocabulary words, day 12, and you will see the video where we learned about demarca demarcate, demarcation. What sort of numbers will we come across which cannot be written as a fraction because of the fact that the death, because of the fact that it is a non-terminating decimal? This, it cannot be written as a fraction. A rational number is something that cannot be written as a fraction because, because, because it has a non-terminating and and non-repeating pattern. Non-terminating and non-repeating. Simply having non-terminating is not enough. 0.33333 is non, non terminating, it never ends. But that, of course, we know 1 over 3, it, it can be written as 1 over 3. Of course, we know that 0.33333 can be written as 1 over 3. And if it can be written, if something can be written as a fraction, it's a rational number. Here we're dealing with something that is not only non terminating, that is not only non terminating, but it also does not have any pattern. Non terminating and non repeating pattern of decimals. Tell you what, I'm going to actually. Give you five seconds. I'm going to give you an unobstructed view of this side of the blackboard, and then I'm going to actually erase everything so that we can we can have some more room so that we can talk about some examples. So, so we can talk about some examples of irrational numbers.
Okay, here we go. The classic example of an irrational number The classic example that almost, uh, uh, classic example that invariably all the books mention when they're discussing the notion of irrational number, the first example that uh, you will uh, you will find in in almost every every book, is the pi. Pi. We will not get into what pi is. If you're interested in what exactly pi is, I'm not asking you what it equals to. If, if somebody asks you what is pi, when I ask a student what is pi, they always end up misinterpreting it and they proudly tell me that it is 3.1416 or whatever it is. No, I'm not asking you how much it is, I'm asking you what is it. If you're interested in learning the concept what pi is, what does it represent conceptually, just type in what is pi along with my name Kishwani and just type in what is pi along with my name Kishwani and you will, you will see a video where you will learn pi. But anyway, the value of pi that is, is is pi equals to 3.141 something 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 it goes on forever and ever it, it never ends there is no pattern there is no rhythm or rhyme there because there is no pattern it never ends it's an irrational number there are quite a few actually natural phenomena that uh, that, uh, that that are irrational numbers so they occur in nature this is a natural phenomenon this is a natural phenomenon which is simply the ratio pi is simply pi is simply the ratio of circumference to the diameter and its value is 3.141 something 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 and it never ends. I'm about to write 3.1416 but I think that will be wrong. I think uh, that's, that's approximate. That's how we approximate it. It's 1.14115 something something something. This is about as far as I can remember. But the point here is it never ends. Here's another example. The base base of natural based of natural logarithm and if you don't know what that means if you don't know what that is if you never come across it don't worry about it but the base of natural logarithm is the value of e which is also something that never ends it goes on forever and ever amen forever and ever amen and there are quite a few the last example I'm going to give you Last one, not, not anymore. The last example I will give you is the square root, square root of a number, of a number that is, that is not, not a perfect square. That is not a perfect square. Let's do it here. We have the room here. Let's continue here. square root of a number that is not a perfect square. For example, square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2 because 4 is a perfect square and therefore that quantity is a rational number. But the square root of 5, because 5 is not a perfect square, square root of 5 is an irrational number. The square root of 7 is an irrational number. The square root, the square root of any number, the square root of square root of any number that is not a perfect square. So that's another very broad category, square root of 5, square root of 4, square root of 3, square root of 11, square root of 17, you name it. As long as it's not a perfect square, it is an irrational number because it will never end. Square root of 7, if you wanted to figure it out, it will be whatever the quantity happens to be. Square root of 7, 7 is between between 4 and 9, so it's going to be 2 point something, but 2 point something, you will see that that decimal will never end, and there is no pattern there. There is no pattern, it just goes on forever. And therefore it cannot be written as a fraction. We cannot express this quantity as one number divided by another number, it is not possible. And because of the fact that square root of 3 cannot be expressed as a fraction, it is called an irrational number. And that's all it is. I'm going to end the video now by giving you homework. I'm going to end the video by giving you homework. Here's the homework. Where can I put the homework here? Let's put the homework here. Something that we'll discuss in the next video just to create some suspense. Just to create some suspense. I'm going to give you a very simple 
question, actually two questions. I'm going to give you two very simple questions. I want you to work on those questions. And then tomorrow when we meet, tomorrow when we meet, we'll discuss them. We'll, uh, you will have your answer and then I'll have my answers. Here are the questions. Is, is, is 1 over 7 rational or irrational? Is, here's the next question, is 89 over 152 rational or irrational? Do what you have to do. We'll meet tomorrow, okay? Bye now.